Hello everyone and welcome to the Elder Sim Racing Porsche 911 RSR Championship. We are live and broadcasting out to everyone here on the Elder Sim Racing uh, pay YouTube channel uh, and page and chat and anywhere else that we're currently in at the moment. Um, Kim's just checking now. If you can, please, that would be absolutely wonderful. <clears throat> um, it looks like we are... There we are. I can hear me in the background, so we must be working and uh, speaking nice and loud. Um, so tonight we are at the wonderful Spa Frackershaft circuit. And uh, just having a quick look, it looks like everything is set and okay. Um, the reason I'm saying that is uh, I'm also hosting the lobby tonight uh, because uh, Darren Baldwin has had his second uh, jab and unfortunately like myself a couple of weeks ago has come down feeling not so great after it which uh, seems to be a common theme um, so we wish Darren well and uh, hopefully we will see him back in a week or two's time uh, like I say we are at the wonderful and historic Spa Frackershop circuit and um, funnily enough for Spa it's wet um, not as wet as we have seen it it's we could see a mixture of strategy here uh, the the tire regulation has been dropped obviously with the wet weather uh, so no requirement to go on to the hard tires for the five laps but the drivers do have op uh, options open to them. Uh, so we've obviously got the hard, medium and soft tyres. For those who do like a gamble and a challenge, um, if they so wish to, they can race on uh, one of those tyres. Or um, the other options uh, are obviously the intermediate tyre or the full wet weather tyre. It looks like looking at uh, a couple of the drivers in the pit lane at the moment, uh, we can see uh, Mark Littlejohn and uh, Bruce Collins currently sat on the uh, wet weather tyre and let's see if we can pick up a few other drivers as we go round so we've got uh, Rasmus Omron here um, second quickest so far currently on the wet weather tyre uh, Stu Shelton also on the wets Adam Dyke uh, going for an intermediate so a good chance to test out the sort of grip levels he, uh, he'll be getting uh, from the intermediate tyre um, but uh, who knows, it might uh, might be a wonderful strategic move from uh, Adam there uh, going on the intermediate. But again, we might see a quick change over to the uh, full wets. Uh, we've got Nuno George back this week and uh, he's currently testing on the full wet weather tyres. Uh, William Lane also on the full wets. Like I say, we can see uh, Little John, Collins, Moncani also on the full wet weather tyre. Uh, currently sat in pit lane. Andy White uh, parked up somewhere. I can't actually make out exactly where he's to. Possibly on the exit of uh, turn number one. Uh, also on the full wet weather tyre. Kim already saying good luck to everyone. Uh, and that she's behind me. And uh, boy do I feel sorry for her. Um, in the uh, in the meantime, uh, we've got about five minutes till qualifying. Uh, we'll stick with uh, one of the drivers here. Uh, Rasmus Omron as uh, he continues to practice uh, with the full wet tyre at the moment and uh, I'll just try to give you a, a quick rundown of everything so obviously we're at round six after tonight there will be just two rounds to go um, we've had a few people unfortunately confirm that they're not going to be here tonight obviously uh, Darren Baldwin will not be uh, taken to the track tonight unfortunately uh, due to as I say his uh, second Covid jab and it making him feel uh, should we say worse for wear um, probably the, uh, the polite way of, uh, of putting it uh, so Darren Baldwin will not be taking track tonight. Unfortunately, I have also had confirmation that uh, Gareth Morris and Craig Thomas won't be uh, able to take to the track tonight either. Um, I'm not in entirely certain as to uh, the issues why, but uh, I know the guys live pretty close to each other, so uh, 
would hazard a guess that, that could be some reasoning uh, behind it. Um, Adam Morgan as well. Um, was it Adam Morgan? Hang on, let me check. Because uh, I do have my information here somewhere. I've just seen Lee Dennington um, put a comment out as well, just as I start to have a look for uh, confirmation of who is missing tonight. And it's uh, Lee Fitzy, unfortunately, will be missing tonight as well. Um, we um, we did say that he was uh, he was struggling last week with uh, with a shoulder injury, and unfortunately, it's just got the better of him uh, this week. So uh, Lee Fitzy, oh, unfortunately, will be missing as well tonight. Uh, so let me just reload everything. Seeing as I came out, um, yes, hello, uh, Lee. Um, Welcome, good luck to everyone, as you say. It's certainly going to be an interesting race, even with the slightly smaller grid. Um, it, uh, it could be a, a very, very interesting uh, little battle. Um, only 10 drivers by the looks of it tonight. We might see more, I'm not quite sure yet. Um, but uh, I'm keeping an eye in any of the chats, um, just in case we get anyone go last minute. Oh, I can't find the lobby. Um, so in the meantime, we'll have a uh, quick rundown as we've got a couple of minutes till qualifying is due to start of the championship table, which uh, Lee Dennington is currently leading after his very, very narrow victory uh, last week at uh, the Yanguina and Maibi circuit, um, winning that uh, by just over two tenths of a second uh, from Gareth Morris in the end. Uh, he's currently sat on top of the championship standings on 99 points. Second place is uh, Mark Littlejohn on 94 points, and I have been informed he has a new pit crew tonight after last week's mishap of um, not fitting the hard tyres at the pit stop and costing him almost certain victory um, last week so um, yes I believe a new pit crew new team manager uh, and everything I believe he said uh, for this week uh, Gareth Morris is currently in third place and will stay in third place after tonight um, on 87 points with Rasmus Omran in uh, fourth place on 59 who he will be extending his uh, his three-point lead that he has at the moment <sighs> over Darren Baldwin who uh, is obviously not taking part tonight unfortunately who sits uh, fifth in the championship on 56 uh, Andy White who is currently the second quickest car in practice uh, sits in sixth place on 38 points who's one point ahead of Craig Thomas so he'll be extending that uh, advantage <laughs> Craig will be dropping down the uh, standings tonight, certainly. He's on 37 points. But we've got Stu Shelton uh, next up on 35. And Shelton currently sat fourth quickest uh, in practice. And he's followed by Adam Dyke, who we saw earlier running the intermediate tyre. Uh, is he still having a, a blast on the intermediates? He is. He's, he looks quite happy on those intermediates by the looks of things. Uh, and he's on 30 points. Then we've got Adam Morgan on 28, Lee Fitzy on 22, tied with uh, Nuno George, who is uh, back tonight, I believe. Um, then we've got Bruce Collins on 15, William Lane on 13, Andrew Osler on 9, and Brian Roncani on 5. Uh, so I'm just checking to make sure we've got no others wanting to join the lobby or shouting that they can't find it or anything like that. Uh, it doesn't seem like we've got anyone missing or panicking or anything like that so um, it's all looking good and is it uh, 10 drivers I believe let's just jump out and make sure everyone's entered so then the road track official uh, da -da, da -da. Yeah, it looks like everyone is here and ready to go. So we'll give the uh, guys a very, very quick mention and uh, good luck to everyone. So used to doing it on the uh, pad, I could type it because the um, the keyboard's right in front of me. 
There we go. Good luck, everyone. And let's start the five minutes of qualifying. So it's going to be very, very tight uh, time-wise. Some might be lucky enough and get um, two laps of qualifying. Uh, but it all depends on how quickly they can get around the track uh, and get out of the pits uh, at the start. Uh, given that this is a, a long lap here. And uh, first out of the pit lane, it looks like will be Lee Dennington. And uh, sure enough, he will take to the track first of all. He will be closely followed by pretty much the rest of the field. We've got uh, Omron out, Little John's out as well, Lane, Shelton, yeah, everyone's out. Marshall, uh, I, I keep saying Marshall, it's because he's... he's um, PSN's Marshall, it's actually Bruce Collins, will be last out on track and it's going to be touch and go whether or not he's going to get uh, two laps in uh, for qualifying. Obviously, with the uh, the wet weather, the, the lap times will be that little bit slower, so if people have worked out um, strategies to... Um, to the dry track then obviously all of that kind of goes out the window a little bit as we see Dennington getting a little bit sideways off the curb um, even on his out lap here so obviously trying to get en enough heat through the tyres nice and early um, but uh, yeah going to be very very interesting to see how the strategy works out how the strategy plays because obviously with the um, the ability not ha or not having to run the uh, the medium and the hard tyre uh, tonight it it just it takes away the tire strategy but we've still got that as we've seen because uh, I believe Adam Dyke has yes he's gone with the intermediate tire um, I believe the only one to go for it uh, so it'll be interesting to see how he goes and will the intermediate tire last longer and better than the full wet weather tire because the, the track's wet but it's not soaking wet like we're, we're used to at Spa. Um, so it'll be, it'll be interesting to see how the tyre wear goes uh, throughout the race. But uh, the guys are now coming round uh, just towards... Yeah, big girl. Uh, just coming round to Blanchemont now uh, to start their flying laps. Obviously, they come up through Blanchemont and towards the newly configured bus stop uh, chicane. Um, those fans from uh, 80s and 90s F1 will remember the original bus stop chicane being very, very tight there. And uh, it'll be uh, interesting to see uh, what actually happens uh, through this section. But it's, it's very, very tight, very technical now. Uh, but we've now got uh, the flying lap starting as Dennington comes down to La Source and he cuts in nice and tight taking the apex there, uh, little drum behind actually taking a little bit more uh, this time round um, they come up to the famous Eau Rouge corner um, and Radion at the top of the hill a little bit sideways on entry there from Dennington but doing very very well so far to keep it all pointing in a straight line uh, Little John doing the same, Omron as well coming up through, absolutely fine. Little John behind, a little bit more curb and uh, extra track if you like, uh, but not enough to uh, be penalised up through uh, Radion. Moncani being followed by Dyke, followed by Shelton, followed by Lane, uh, followed by White, followed by Lane and Collins uh, now just coming up through Eau Rouge himself now as well and Radion and off down uh, Kemmel Strait. We'll go back to uh, Dellington here at the front as we have a quick look. Evening Nick and Kim, uh, you feel rubbish. Chill out man, chill out, relax. You can put this on in the background and go back to sleep if you like, uh, Darren. Have some cheesecake, you'll feel good. Cheesecake apparently makes you feel better. I don't know, I didn't try it. Um, but uh, back to qualifying. <laughs> Yes, Jack and Potato did help. Uh, back to qualifying, Dennington now comes down towards uh, the campus corner at turn 13 and 14, and uh, then Stavlot at turn number 15. We see him come out of campus here, down towards turn number 15, and Sla uh, Stavlot uh, corner before the long drag 
out of I'm gonna have a go I'm gonna have a go I'll probably pronounce it wrong uh, but Kerber Paul Fer Ferrari probably wrong but that's how I'm going with it uh, as he as Dennington now comes up towards uh, Blanchemont for the final time in qualifying he's not actually going to get a second lap so the the wet weather really making this a one shot showdown for qualifying and the times are going to come through thick and fast because that's the end of qualifying so Dennington now up through the bus stop chicane the right then the left and the short squirt up to the start finish line because it's very very close squirming away as he puts the power down and across the line now will give him provisional pole position second so far is uh, little john who stays second omron comes across the line now goes into third then it'll be uh, nuno george across the line now and into fourth then Adam Dyke on the intermediate tyres. He's got himself ahead of uh, Moncani by the looks of it, who's had an issue. Dyke goes up into fourth. Shelton into sixth. Andy White goes to fourth himself. Uh, so Lane now across the line and stays in eighth. Uh, Collins now will be the ninth person across the line and will put it into eighth place ahead of Lane. And Moncani, I would imagine, will be in tenth place having made a mistake somewhere on the lap there we are yes yeah, certainly a mistake there from Moncani 23 seconds behind he wasn't that far behind in practice uh, so Dennington will take pole position for the race as uh, we see the drivers on the grid right now all the lights on flicking ring away everyone's windscreen wipers on by the looks of it as well uh, so maybe a, a sign of a little drizzle still in the air I'll try and uh, try not to yawn too much uh, throughout the night. Not helped by Kim there in the background. Uh, but we have the lights on and we're ready to get underway right now the lights turn to green and they're away lots of wheel spin from everyone adam dyke pulling out already trying to get out of the mist and having a look down into uh, the source as uh, uh, lap number one gets underway and it looks like dyke's got himself up into third on those medium tires a little bit slippy out of uh, turn number one but it will be Dennington who will lead us up through Eau Rouge for the first time with Little John in second place. Dyke now up into third after a great start on those intermediate tyres. Uh, behind him it will be Omron, White and George. Followed by Collins who's done, had a uh, good start as well. Shelton in eighth. Lane in ninth and Moncani still there in tenth place. They come down Camel Straight for the first time and it's almost line the stern at the moment as they all try to pick up Slipstream and save that bit of fuel as much as they can. It looks like behind White's going to have a look up the inside of Omram, maybe decides better of it as they come uh, through uh, Lacoon for the first time out towards. Uh, yeah, out, uh, out of Lacoon down to turn number 10. I'm not going to attempt turn number 10's name. It's got X's and L's in it all over the place. Is it, as we see there, uh, Dyke runs wide on those intermediate tyres and drops from third down to sixth place. Unfortunately, just saw him on that uh, lovely high shot of uh, turn 10. They come down towards uh, turn 12, the wonderful uh, Puon corner and uh, Dennington keeping it nice and tight. We're running out wide onto the kerb, back in for the second part of the uh, Pu Puon apex and uh, extending that lead just that little bit up to about seven tenths of a second now over Mark Littlejohn and these two are pulling away as we have seen multiple times from the tyre strategy master of uh, Rasmus Omron who always seems to be making his tyres last half the race distance. Can he do the same tonight on the wet, uh, wet weather tyres? Only time will tell. Will they need to stop? We don't know this. This is the unknown. You you might find some try to go as far as they possibly can without stopping. And who knows? Someone like uh, Omron, who who has seems to have managed their tyres really, really well, um, might not actually change his tyres at all. There will be pit stops, because uh, obviously the fuel wear will still be working away, but obviously the fuel rate will come down, because they're not going to be using as much fuel as, uh, as the race goes on. So it's... 
it's very hit and miss as to what's going to happen, who's going to pit when. All my strategy work's gone out the window because of the uh, the tire, uh, the, the rain that's uh, come down, and it, it's blown everything out of proportion uh, and out the window of anything that we had planned originally. Uh, but Dennington will lead the first lap of the race back down into La Source uh, with a 1.1 second lead over Mark Littlejohn in second place so far. He's got one and a half second lead over Omron. A nice little battle between Lane and Collins there coming out of La Source as they head up towards Eau Rouge. Well, the camera angle will change just about in time as we see him enter Eau Rouge. Uh, now Collins now getting the better of Lane for seventh place at the moment up through a rouge not an overtaking place but lane decides it could well be they come through uh, radion lane out wide there on the exit uh, ahead it looked like adam dyke had a uh, penalty down chemical strike that he's uh, taken that's going to pull him towards this battle for uh, seventh and eighth and behind ninth and tenth shelton and moncani moncani's if you remember in the early stages of the season was standing in for shelton and scoring those points for shelton um, in the first three rounds I believe uh, so seeing these two battle it out as um, good friends and uh, Moncani who's helped Shelton in the past uh, very interesting it'll be interesting to see how this one uh, progresses throughout the uh, rest of the race uh, no. uh, sorry Kim asking questions as well about uh, other tracks for tomorrow night's races as well that we've got uh, coming up live on the Elder Sim Racing Channel but more about that later on as uh, Dennington extends his lead now even further 1.8 seconds ahead uh, of uh, Little John so uh, the championship battle could be extending just that little bit uh, but these guys aren't actually dropping Rasmus Omron as much as they would like and Andy White as well still in close contention behind Nuno George now got himself up into fifth place as well doing a fantastic job himself Adam Dykes uh, got another slight penalty will he decide to uh, spend the penalty coming out of uh, Paul Ferrer and down towards Bonchamon we shall see but doing a lovely impression of a four wheel drift coming out of uh, turn 16 there as he heads out towards uh, Bonchamon uh, I would imagine he'll probably spend that uh, penalty somewhere very soon and uh, 0.4 a second, a little bit wide there, could cost him a little bit more time as well. Uh, I know sometimes the penalties can be a little bit strict coming down into that section, but a uh, little bit of penalty spend in uh, the bus stops chicane, but it uh, looks like they're all just spreading out a little bit. I did notice that Shelton there uh, on the wide angle shot um, has got himself up ahead of uh, Lane, who's now struggling, and Moncani's got himself ahead of Lane as well. Uh, Lane struggling a little bit. Did uh, did we see some slight issue somewhere uh, coming towards Blanchemont or something like that? Maybe a little bit sooner than that. Uh, but uh, Lane dropping down. Uh, what are we? Two places. He he was on the back of Marshall, uh, back of Collins last time we saw. Uh, so we go back to the uh, leader, and uh, the gaps now come down to about a second so maybe a little bit of fuel saving going on uh, from Dennington now as uh, Little John closes up that gap uh, just that little bit uh, like I said down to a roughly a second ish uh, but the slipstream will be he helping uh, down Kemmel straight uh, still we've got Rasmus Omron in third place uh, not uh, not leaving this battle for the lead uh, as much as they probably would have hoped at the moment and behind uh, Omron is uh, Andy White uh, only nine tenths of a second behind the, the gaps obviously you'll want to keep that little bit of distance until you know you can go for the overtake with all the spray coming off of the uh, car in front doesn't help the visibility in certain corners and um, certainly can uh, easily miss your braking point as we saw with uh, Adam Dyke earlier on in the race uh, Nuno George here in fifth place nice to see Nuno back after uh, missing last week and doing another stellar job there in uh, fifth place uh, pointing it keeping it all pointing in the right direction at the moment sixth place is uh, Adam Dyke uh, still chasing uh, George down after the uh, early mistake at turn uh, number 10 uh, in seventh place is Collins now keeping it nice and steady with uh, the Alley Porsche, uh, the 88 Alley Porsche I should say, and uh, yeah, doing another another good job. It seems like uh, we know 
we remember earlier on in the season he was having a few internet connection issues but uh, seems to have had that uh, all sorted out now and uh, running very nicely and quite strongly there in seventh place he's got uh, about two and a half second lead ahead of Stu Shelton who's got a similar sort of gap to uh, Brian Moncarney that little bit further back and similar gap two and a half seconds back to uh, Lane who could well be doing a little bit of fuel saving uh, right now and uh, who knows uh, what lane might have up his sleeve later on in the race save that bit of fuel save that extra lap one lap less um later on in the uh, in the race uh, who knows you never know it might uh, might play into lane's hand a little bit later on down the line back to the front and it's still a about one and a half second lead as we have a random dog nearby um, still about one and a half second lead for Dennington in uh, in the lead uh, from Little John in second place in the uh, white and black Jack Daniels Porsche uh, what have we got here we've got a few more comments here uh, we've got uh, Malcolm Argyle has joined us as well and uh, nice to see Malcolm joining in and uh, listening into um, essentially me trying to in impersonate him uh, for a change considering <laughs> not <laughs> nowhere near <laughs> uh, but Malcolm Argyle uh, will be uh, back behind the microphone tomorrow night for the GT Supercars on the Elder Sim Racing channel as well if you're uh, not racing uh, or taking part in uh, GT Supercars or the WTSC uh, do check it out because there's been some some fantastic racing there um, throughout the uh, the series and um, at the same time like I say we've got the WTSC series brought to you it will be a re-live uh, unfortunately this week uh, as uh, Andy Hopley is away and uh, watching a wedding so more than likely more than likely um, having a few beers and enjoying himself and I don't blame him in the slightest uh, but Andy says he'll be doing a re-live during uh, next week for the WTSC back to the Porsches for the time being and uh, we have Lee Dennington who's now stretched out to a 2.1 second excuse me 2.1 second lead over uh, Little John in second place who still cannot drop the uh, pink BWT uh, Force India inspired uh, Porsche of uh, Rasmus Omron who uh, is just sticking around that one one second to 1.2 seconds and he's not dropping Andy White in fourth place who is still in his lovely orange uh, livery um, but uh, I was so used to the uh, the yellow one at the start of the season uh, but Andy just sitting around that, that eight tenths to one second mark as well uh, not uh, not leaving not letting the, the two in front of him out of sight too much uh, in fifth place, we still have Nuno George in the uh, VLR liveried uh, Porsche with uh, Adam Dyke, who's got himself uh, a little bit more settled now on those intermediate tyres. I keep saying he's on the intermediates. I, yes, he is. Um, he's on the intermediate tyres and got himself more settled now. You can see he's pulled the gap in now to uh, to George in front of him. And uh, we can see as they come through the source, uh, Shelton now has got himself a little bit more settled and is catching up on Marshall behind him as uh, they come down the uh, second start and finish section. This is obviously the uh, support start and finish line. Um, thank you very much, Malcolm. Um, if you are able to stick around, please do. And you never know what uh, you might see, hear, or be able to comment on. Um, but Shelton now putting Collins under major pressure pressure as they come up to Lacoum into the braking zone. Wet weather, can they keep it both on track? Yes, just about. And Shelton up into seventh place now, ahead of Collins. The uh, BP Flower Delivery doing a fantastic job after a not so great start. He slipped back towards the uh, rear of the field, but uh, working his way up nicely up into seventh place. Uh, from memory, it was about two and a half seconds about a lap ago. Uh, so to catch up that much and already pull a what are we half second gap in a couple of corners. Fantastic work from uh, Stu Shelton, and who knows, he might be uh, catching up with the next little battle that we can see ahead. Uh, Lane has unfortunately left the room after a few struggles there. We saw him drop towards the uh, rear of the field quite quickly. We did wonder if there was an issue, so uh, retiring the car early on, unfortunately. Uh, for uh, Lane 
clearly some issue going on for him there. Back to the front and Dennington now uh, just about, I would say, I'm going to go out on a limb, I'm going to say he's managing the gap uh, around about the two second mark, he's quite happy there, just enough, just far enough away not to give any slipstream down through uh, the likes of this section here, through Blanchemont um, and uh, down Kemmel Strait after uh, Radion uh, so just managing the gap, managing the fuel used, managing the tyre wear, we've seen this from uh, from Lieb before and uh, he's, he's very very good at it, slightly snaky on the brakes there into the bus stop chicane um, I'm, I'm going to come out and admit that uh, this new bus stop chicane, it's a good couple of corners, but I still wish we had the original. Those, like I was saying it earlier, those who enjoyed the uh, Formula 1 races of the 80s and the 90s will remember the traditional bus stop chicane, uh, where it was a bus stop. Um, hence its name, and uh, those eagle-eyed of you would have spotted the bus stop on the uh, left-hand side of the uh, track at the time, because uh, this is part uh, part circuit, part um, part rural world road, if you like. Um, admittedly, only a very small section of it, but the the bus stop chicane was an infamous corner, um, and one we've gave many many opportunities to overtake uh, and we saw many overtakes there over the years as well um, they have changed it over the years some prefer it me I, I'm a traditionalist I love the original I thought it was a, a real test and uh, after seeing the the first part of the chicane seeing the drivers hit the throttle as hard as they could coming through the second section through the little left hand kink uh, back to the start finish line that was always lovely to see uh, but uh, who knows they might revert back over the years but um, fortunately I doubt we'll see it again um, in its old state if you haven't seen it YouTube it because uh, you'll love it. It, it classic corner um, seeing the likes of Schumacher, Hill, Hakkinen come through there um, was brilliant, absolutely brilliant but I diverse and um, we go back, go back to Lee Dennington at the front of the field who's lost 6 tenths, six to 8 tenths of a second um, to uh, Little John and just as I say that he starts to increase the gap again uh, it's almost like he's listening to me and uh, working on uh, what I'm saying but he starts to increase the uh, gap again out uh, to about one and a half seconds now over Little John in second place who has extended the gap now to Rasmus Omron maybe Omron now deciding I'll save those tyres that little bit we we know he does it uh, we've seen it in the past rounds on the uh, on the slick tyres but can he do the same in the wet weather uh, but now down to about uh, 2.1 seconds behind uh, Little John is Omron uh, in fourth place is uh, still Andy White still about two seconds so he's still within touching distance um, but far enough away if there is any major issues within these uh, with it with the, the wet weather and someone spins drops it on a curb and spins the, the rear tires up something like that he's far enough away so he can avoid the accident easily and not spin out himself um, but who would have thought it we're already a quarter of the distance uh, through the race so five laps down quarter of a distance that probably means we're looking at what six laps in the book now quarter distance or oh, what are we 12 24 laps roughly talking um it might drop to about 23 with the uh, the pits uh pit cycles uh but yeah it, it, we know that spa on gt sport it does have, seem to have a longer pit stop time, so I'll go on a go out now, and I'm going to say 23 laps uh, will be our uh, target tonight. Uh, fifth place is still Nuno George, who uh, has he's dropped to about 7.7 .7 seconds uh, behind Andy White, but certainly uh, looking at a, a decent position in fifth place at the moment. Uh, Adam Dyke hasn't been able to close up too much uh, on George at the moment, but still working those intermediate tyres brilliantly. Uh, how's he looking wear wise to Nuno a little bit more wear on the tyre but obviously with the rear end slipping around it's going to wear the tyre that little bit quicker uh, for Adam but it's not high tyre wear rate as I say that he's really loose out of uh, 
turn number nine there at the uh, end of Lacoon, a little bit wide as well into turn ten. I've, and uh, as I say that, we saw Stu Shelton very, very wide, losing time there to uh, Bruce Collins as well, uh, just losing that, that little bit under braking as uh, the three here at uh, the rear of the pack. Uh, just a few seconds covering. We've got Shelton in seventh place. Uh, Collins in 8th and Moncani there in ninth. Moncani's another one who's very very good on tyres, very very good on the fuel uh, as I say that we'll have we'll go through and we'll have a look at uh, the wear rates, the tyres, the fuel Dennington here in 1st place um, the wear rate on the tyres like I say we're not expecting huge amounts of wear tonight uh, because of the wet weather it's, it, they don't wear out as quickly um, but slightly like I said earlier, slightly drier than we than we would normally see at Spa. Uh, so who knows? The the wear might start to increase suddenly as uh, they the tyres war, uh, warm up and wear down. Um, just under half a tank of fuel. We go to uh, Little John, who's got a little bit better on the fuel, but obviously the slip streaming in second place that will help him save that bit of fuel as well. Uh, we go to Omron, who's really eating into the fuel and into the tyres, so no major strategy on um, uh, on the car so far for Omron. He's uh, he's actually worse off than Dennington in front. Maybe this is why we're seeing him so close. Uh, but he, he would have worked out already. Maybe he can go like this and still do the same amount of pit stops as uh, the lead two and still keep himself in contention. Uh, we have a look at Andy White now, who's a little bit worse on fuel as well to uh, Omron in front and Tyre roughly the same as well. Uh, but uh, clearly the, the front two are finding it a little bit easier to save fuel. Nuno George is probably the next best on fuel. He's, he, he's probably sat in about third place on the uh, the fuel uh, use uh, leaderboard so far. Fuel saving leaderboard, I should say. Um, so he's, he's actually doing a very good job. There might be an, the extra lap that he can save. And if it's not the extra lap, it's a little bit less time in pit lane. And it all counts. Those, those two, three extra seconds... Uh, could mean everything we can see it here, it was 7.7 .7, it's now 6.5 seconds so two pit stops two seconds a, a stop that puts him to about the two second mark so it, it all plays major major strategy clauses and things like that all come into effect as the pit stops come into effect later on in the race I'm going to say that we're probably looking at about one stop uh, given we're 20 minutes into the race already of the uh, hour so 40 minutes to go yeah could probably stretch these uh, quarter of a tank uh, or quarter of a tanks of fuel out for another 10 minutes um, having said that you'd, you'd want to be about a third of a tank left so Adam Dyke here could be struggling a little bit on the fuel side given he's got quarter of a tank left uh, at the moment but uh, time will tell uh, Stu Shelton as well about quarter of a tank of fuel the, the tyre wears aren't too bad you might see some actually try it and, and stick with the tyres that they've got if they're quite happy with, uh, with how things are going um, Collins as well not doing too bad on uh, fuel and then Moncani oh, very very slippy slidey uh, fuel rate not great but the tyre wear is looking good so he I'd hazard a guess that Moncani is going to go for the um, the no no change of tyres, given the the small amount of wear there uh, compared to everyone else. But uh, probably have to grab a tank of fuel. Uh, but again, it's those extra seconds, it's those extra five ten seconds that you might save. As we've been talking, we can see that the lead gap has come down a little bit more. It was 2.2 seconds earlier uh, when I said that he was he was managing it uh, but Dennington now is down to a 1.3 second lead over Little John and uh, Little John now starting to put that a little bit of pressure and this is where the mistakes can happen. Um, we saw it last week uh, where Little John was coming under a little bit of pressure from Dennington maybe. Dennington putting in some very quick lap times and the team blew it for for Little John. He put on they put on the uh, medium tyres when they should have put on the hard. It cost him an extra pit stop and relegated him down to uh, third place at the end of the race. He had victory all written up for himself. It was wrapped. It was the the bow was on it. The label was written, and the team lost it for him. But uh, hopefully no mistakes. Well, we won't see mistakes tonight because there's no tyre regulation. We don't have to run the medium, uh, the hard tyre for the five laps. 
Are we going to see someone gamble? Are we going to see someone put on a set of slick tyres? Unlikely, yes, but you never know. Um, but uh, we've got 30 or just about 37 and a half minutes to go. And uh, every time I join, every time I join, I say Dennington's starting to lose that little bit of time and he starts to extend it again. Little John still in second place. Omron still keeping the two in front. Very, very honest in third place. Fourth place now is... Uh, Andy White, who's uh, starting to just fall back that little bit, maybe trying to save that little bit of extra fuel now. Uh, dropping back to uh, just over five seconds behind uh, Omron. And behind we have a change. We've got Adam Dyke now up into um, fifth place. I'm going to try. I'm going to see if we get lucky. Did we see a mistake? We don't, unfortunately. So uh, Adam Dyke looks like he's got that move done somewhere out of uh, the source, up through erosion down Kemmel Strait. Uh, but Adam Dyke now up into fifth place, ahead of Nuno George in sixth. And they've now got uh, Collins up into seventh place. And uh, he's only about three seconds behind uh, Nuno George, but he's got himself up ahead of Stu Shelton. So we're getting up. We're getting bits happening all the time. The, the tyre wear obviously is now having an effect. You see there, a little bit sideways from Dennington coming it through uh, Blanchemont. Up towards the bus stop she came, braking earlier and earlier and earlier. It looked like Little John was very, very late on the brakes, but he still manages to make the apex into the first part of the bus stop she came, taking a cut couple of tenths out of uh, Dennington's lead in the process as well uh, just 2.1 seconds behind is Rasmus Omron as well uh, so it's anyone's guess as to who uh, who's going to be uh, coming out of the pit stop cycle in first place we've got uh, Andy White in he's the first person to pit and they've got a set of is that the, is that the intermediate tyres they've got there we'll see in a minute but that that looked very much like no, that's, that's going to be the wet weather tyres there. Collins as well is going to come into pit lane. You can see how long this is taking. Look, if you can save it or save enough fuel to just do the one stop, look at the time you're saving. Masses amounts of time. Moncani uh, is towards the rear of the field, really struggling by the looks of it. Uh, now as he's uh, 57 seconds, maybe some issue going on as well in the uh, blue and green camo uh, Porsche this time round but uh, either that or he's saving massive amounts of fuel um, for himself and uh, gonna squeeze another two laps out of it maybe back towards the front and uh, it's still Dennington with a 1.2 second lead ahead of Little John who's got a 2.3 second lead now over Omron there in third place in the uh, pink and blue Porsche fourth now is the intermediate shot uh, Adam Adam Dyke and doing a fantastic job okay 14 seconds behind but those intermediate tyres are working well for Adam will he change over to the, the full wets uh, on the pit stop I'm going to say he's not going to and he's actually extended that lead very very quickly to uh, Nuno George he's got 6.5 seconds over Nuno now uh, so is Nuno struggling on uh, tyres or maybe fuel um, time will tell but uh, We'll uh, pop to the guys who have actually pitted and see if they fitted new boots or did they just go with fuel only. Collins did go fuel only, saving uh, the uh, the time it took to change the tyres. Andy White did go for the tyres though. Um, so Andy's had a new set of wet weather tyres. Clearly not happy with the uh, grip levels that were being given out for uh, the worn tyres at the time. And... Uh, We'll see if that uh, that can get him into the battle for uh, for the podium positions. As we see them come up towards the bus stop chicane again, Dennington deciding now to go for another lap. Little John doing the same. Omron, now's the time for Omron to pit. 33.3 seconds. It's touch and go whether or not he will have to pit again. Um, but uh, the extra bit of fuel in there might just be enough to save that uh, that lap later on in the race. Uh, I did say we'd probably be looking about 23 laps. We're at 11 laps now, so we're just under half distance. Uh, Adam Dyke also into pit lane, we can see here uh, on the intermediate tyres. Have to keep an eye, see if he decides to stick with those inters or change over to the full wet. This um, promote, promotes Nuno George up into third place now, who's got two and a half second lead from uh, Sue Shelton in fourth. 
Uh, I said it with confidence, but uh, who knows, is Omron going to come out of the pits just yet? Not quite yet, still taking on the uh, the fuel. As, uh, yeah, still taking on a full tank of fuel. Very, very slow pit stop. But uh, Andy, uh, Andy White, who uh, took tyres and fuel, comes across the line. It promotes him up into fifth, but... Uh, that could change as he comes round through the source now and Omron just about comes out of the pits there you can see him in front of uh, White and it's it, the gaps maintain well he's actually come down that little bit because uh, Andy dropped to about six seconds so it's come down a fair old chunk but Andy will have to manage the fuel usage so that's where he's going to lose out that little bit to Omron this time around but again Omron might have to do it as well because we're at 32 minutes we're not quite half distance so uh, the fuel usage will have to be monitored will have to be tinkered as time goes on uh, Adam Dyke out of uh, pit lane as well and did he stick with the medium tire intermediate tires he did uh, so he will be going to the end of the race I would imagine on those intermediate tires and he got himself out ahead of uh, Colin who is in eighth place still? Uh, Moncani still going round uh, in ninth place, but he will be, I would imagine, be pitting at the end of this lap, uh, and will be good on fuel to the end of the race. We go back to the leaders, who I would hazard a guess will be in at the end of this lap. Denton might be able to stretch an extra lap, as might uh, we might see an extra lap out of these two. We might see an extra lap out of these two just yet. Let's, uh, let's see. Dennington snaking the rear end under brakes into the bus stop chicane. And he is going to go for another lap. And sure enough, uh, Little John will stick with him uh, for one more lap. These two will certainly get to half distance as well. Um, well under half distance by the time they come around and complete the lap. Um, given the fastest laps, a 2 minute 37 set by Dennington so far. They're probably going to be looking, what, 1 minute 30 underneath the halfway mark. So it'll be uh, fuel mixture 1 right the way to the end of the race. Either of them, either of them going to do uh, an Adam Dyke special and gamble on the intermediate tyre? Time will tell. Time will tell. Third place, we see George and Fourth Shelton both coming to the pits, I believe. Yes, both in pit lane now. Uh, Shelton and uh, George hitting pit lane. So this could promote... Um, Andy White and uh, Rasmus Omron up to uh, third and fourth place as the two of them now very very close together that was a two second gap when they came out of the pits Andy very very confident on the uh, cooler wet weather tyres closing that gap now to uh, about half a second and we'll stick with these two in fact let's actually jump on board let's go to the uh, the top of the uh, roof and uh, see as they come through the source Andy White will be looking to pick up the slipstream as much as he can can we even get the yeah let's get the telemetry up as well uh, as they come down the hill past the support race uh, start finish uh, line and uh, pits section they come through Eau Rouge now Rasmus on run out a little bit wide there just about catching the curb to avoid the penalty but uh, Andy White's got the better exit as he comes out and alongside Omron now down Kimmel straight down towards uh, Lacoons turns 7, 8 and 9 and he's in front, he's got himself up into third place and extending away that little bit from Omron, is Omron saving that little bit too much fuel, is Andy not saving enough, time will tell yet again between the two of them but it is Andy White in the driving seat currently on the uh, third step of the podium Dennington and Little John still battling away. The gaps opened up to about two seconds, so some little mistake maybe from uh, Little John on this lap. But um, it's, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, some small mistake from uh, Little John somewhere around the uh, lap there. But um, the gap up to about two seconds again, but these two will be into the pits this time around. Through Blanchemont, it's certainly Little John very, very wide through Blanchemont there. Maybe picking up a penalty, maybe, or does he get away with it? Time will tell. Through the bus stop chicane, keep it over to the right-hand side. Both drivers into pit lane now. The battle of who can save the most fuel. Who... Who's done a better job? It is just about Mark Little John who has done, saved just that fraction more fuel um, between the two of them but when I say a fraction we are talking a fraction 
Uh, will there be any short, f short filling uh, between the two of them to try and get that track position? We shall see. Uh, the battle for third place continues and it's Andy White who's got himself in the driving seat uh, over the uh, pink BWT uh, Rasmus Omron uh, Porsche. He's got himself up to about 1.3 second lead so far. But remember, these two pitted just before the 30 minute mark. So there'll be a bit of fuel saving. Um, we just, we don't know. We just don't know how much fuel saving will have to go on. Are they going to be able to challenge the two ahead? Because they were doing so well earlier, keeping it within about two seconds. The, uh, the lead two, Dennington and Little Jump, are both still in pits as Dennington now hits the exit of pit lane, both filling the car right up to the, uh, the brim. They do keep their first and second places um, as a mistake, a mistake by Andy White at the source. Or was it a mistake coming? It was a mistake coming out of the bus stop. Andy got a little bit loose. We were trying to see what happened to uh, to Dennington, but Andy got that little bit loose coming out of uh, the bus stop just before the start and finish straight, and uh, that allowed Omron back up into third place. But Andy's certainly not going to give this up at all. Back in the slipstream, down towards uh, Lacoon yet again, and he's up the inside nice and early. And he's got the position back. That didn't take him long at all. Back up into third place now for Andy White. And if he's got pace like that, you've got to start to wonder whether or not the um, the fuel saving is going to happen. Or is he going to have a splash and dash towards the end of the uh, race? Time will tell. Time will tell. But the uh, battle for the lead uh, is about two and a half seconds now. So uh, Dennington is certainly happier on the fresher tyres at the moment over uh, Little John, who's in second place. He's got about a six second lead over Andy White, who got himself back up into third place. Omron in fourth. And it's now Adam Dyke in fifth place uh, on those intermediate tyres. Uh, doing a grand job as well. Moncani in sixth place. Surely not. Surely not Moncani's going Moncani must have pitted and short fueled. Surely he's not going to go to the end of the race on that. Um, on just half a tank of fuel. Surely not. Or is he just going to fuel save like anything else uh, and hope that the people behind um, have to pit again? You never know. This could be a strategical masterclass by Moncani to get to uh, sixth place. But time will tell. Shelton up into seventh place. He's got himself back ahead of. Uh, Bruce Collins who has dropped massively so there must be some mistake there from Collins to drop that far back um, down 25 seconds and the same with Nuno George unfortunately a, a mistake there we just saw at the coom and he goes straight on again There's, there must be some issue for George there must be some issue a, a tire down or a, a broken steering arm or the way that car's uh, going there's some issue it looks like he's out he's out the race unfortunately is uh, George some major issue we caught it just on camera he went straight on at uh, turn nine um so certainly some issue unfortunately for uh, for george don't know what's happened there but at, at a guess i would say something steering based uh for him and a, a real shame because he was doing brilliantly uh in the uh, fifth and sixth place battle with adam dyke uh so to drop that far down a real shame for nuno and uh, nuno dropping out leaving us with just the eight runners now with 24 minutes to go Dennington still with a 2.2 second lead over Mark Littlejohn um, who's actually losing a little bit of time to the uh, guys behind but we know the guys behind they were pitted they pitted earlier will the fuel fuel saving come in later on who knows but um, Andy White now seems to be managing a bit of a gap uh, around about the two two and a half second two seconds uh, gap to uh, Omron in fourth place fifth is still Adam Dyke don't forget he's the one who's gambled he's gone on those intermediate tires um, he's hoping the rain's gonna stop um, he's hoping the rain's gonna stop and uh, the, the track dry out that little bit so who knows who knows we might uh, might see it come back towards Adam uh, a little bit later on the race but the windscreen wipe is still on. You never know. Uh, he'll be hoping and praying that the rain stops. And it, uh, we can see the sun just starting to rise. You never know. It might start to dry the track out. Uh, sixth place is Brian Moncarney. And uh, fuel saving for 
every part of his life running that little bit wide there in turn 10 but uh, fuel saving as much as he can with just the 23 minutes to go can he get to the end of the race four seconds uh, gap he's got now to uh, Shelton just about seeing the two of them together in uh, in shot but uh, the, the gap is coming down massively Shelton will not be as uh, as much of a fuel saver right now and in eighth place is uh, Bruce Collins continuing round 25 seconds back but you never know Moncani might just be coming in that little bit as time goes on um, ah, no worries shame that uh, shame that we've lost Nuno there but uh, Clearly uh, an issue going on for uh, Nuno towards the uh, latter part of, uh, or the early part of the lap there. We see there Little John getting it all wrong into uh, the bus stop chicane, running very, very wide and deep, uh, costing him about a second uh, in time to Dennington. That's now three and a half seconds, so uh, Little John will be doing everything he can to pull Dennington back. If, they're, if they've got... Um, any radio connection or a chat going maybe um, between the two maybe you start streaming down uh, Lee's ear and trying to put him off uh, but uh, maybe he'll just sit and settle for uh, second place we shall only see what happens as the uh, clock continues to tick down 21 and a half minutes to go now but uh, Dennington do I dare put the commentator's curse on him now um, and say that Dennington very it. looking very very solid so far three and a, three point six seconds ahead looking in a very strong position he's looked strong all evening hasn't lost that lead all evening as well he's looking very strong for the victory here I said it last week that to little John and the team messed up the pit pit stop there's not going to be another pit stop I don't think for Dennington so the only thing that's going to do going to go wrong for him here is something his end um i, I apologize now lee if i've put the uh, commentator's curse on you but things are looking strong right now three and a half seconds back to uh, mark littledron with andy white 4.4 seconds further back still looking very strong he's opened up the gap now to five and a half seconds um so maybe no fuel saving going on here for andy white and uh, uh maybe looking at a splash and dash how's he looking on the fuel Oh, he's burning through that fuel very, very quickly. I doubt very much he'll get to the end of the race on what he's got left. So uh, we'll be looking at a, uh, another pit stop for Andy White here. Uh, but he'll be looking to extend the gap uh, as much as he can over Omron in uh, fourth place. It's up to five and a half seconds so far, but he's going to need a little bit more than that uh, if he's going to pull out this, uh, this strategy. But again, Omron might need to pit as well, although there is fuel saving going on. Uh, from Omron so it, it's touch and go it is touch and go as to what's going to happen between uh, these two for the battle for third place and who knows just 19 seconds uh, I say 19 seconds nearly 20 seconds uh, behind uh, Omron is Adam Dyke and he could get played in to the battle with Andy White given how long those pit stops do take it uh, so you never know Adam could be could be looking at a, a decent fourth place here maybe um, but uh, we'll have to see where Andy comes out and then how much fuel he has to save if any uh, to the end of the race Shelton now up into sixth place got himself ahead uh, of Brian Moncani and opening up the gap very very quickly seven and a half seconds already uh, to Moncani but we know Moncani is saving fuel massively how's he doing on that job well, it's looking very, very tight, and uh, there might need to be a little splash and dash as well. Moncani has also got a little bit of front-end damage, so maybe a, an off-track excursion somewhere as Shelton uh, came past him. But uh, time will tell. But certainly Monc uh, Moncani is now being caught quickly by eighth-place uh, Bruce Collins. That was a 25-second gap um, just about a lap ago. It's down to 18 and a half seconds now. So uh, Collins, I did say he'll be reeling him in, and he is doing just that. Uh, back to the uh, leaders, and Dennington now up to a four-and-a-half-second lead. Has he just got that psychological edge tonight over Mark and and just managing to turn that screw? Maybe that last week just affecting Mark just that little bit more than we expected. Um, he was saying it's a, a whole new team that he's got uh, on board for tonight and uh, maybe things just not quite settling right for uh, for the 
the team tonight and uh, you can see it's just affecting him. He, he had that uh, late uh, late breaking uh, move a couple of laps ago down into the bus stop chicane maybe that's just unsettled him that little bit warm the tires out that little bit getting a vibration through the very fast uh, sections of track here uh, at uh, spa fracker shops and uh, maybe it's affecting him just that little bit more than we thought just behind him still is uh, Andy White, 3.7 seconds, but opening up that lead even more to Omron in fourth place. Now up to seven seconds as well. So uh, Andy's doing a fantastic job in opening the gap up, and I th he's certainly taking uh, Adam Dyke out of uh, contention, I think, for uh, grabbing fourth place. Uh, Andy's now got, what, a 20... 29 second lead over uh, Adam Dyke in third uh, in fifth place so uh, I, I think fourth place might just be slipping away from here from uh, Adam just that little bit and uh, Adam might start have to look start looking behind him as uh, seven and a half seconds behind is Stu Shelton on those full wet weather tires and things aren't coming towards those intermediates um, and the wear rate's gonna gonna play out that little bit as sure enough we see Andy White hitting pit lane uh, so it'll be Omron up into third place now as he comes across the start finish line putting lap number 16 into the book for himself uh, so where is this going to bring Andy White out after his pit stop it's uh, Adam Dyke in fifth place at the moment as he comes up to the bus stop chicane through the right through the left squeeze the power on gently in this wet weather avoid the curb if you can because that will just kick the back end out and uh, across the line now is uh, Adam Dyke and uh, will he inherit fourth place will uh, Andy White need to do something miraculous uh, to get himself back up it's Adam Dyke certainly got himself up into fourth fifth place now is uh, Shelton and he comes past pit exit very very wide on the exit of the source and uh, and still no sign of Andy White. Is he going for a full tank of fuel with just 15 minutes to go? Surely not. Uh, Moncani just about getting ahead. And we see now Andy White coming out of pit lane just behind Moncani. And it's almost a full tank of fuel for Andy White. He has gone big and bold. Six laps to go. Almost a full tank. Fuel mixture one. Pedal to the metal. Can he get himself back up into third place? And uh, into the battle. Oh into the uh, battle with uh, Rasmus Omron. What are we looking? We're 21 and a half. Uh, 29, 30 seconds, 40, 40 seconds roughly um, to Omron. So that's an awful lot of time for Andy White to be pa uh, to be picking back up. But he's already got himself ahead of Brian Moncani up into sixth place. So uh, let's see what, uh, see what can be done uh, as we go back to our leader for the night. And uh, Lee Dennington still in uh, first place, five seconds ahead of uh, Mark Littlejohn, who's got, got a 13-second lead over uh, Omron in, uh, in third place. So I'll hazard a guess that uh, it's going to be these two for first and second, barring any mistakes. And I keep saying it, barring any mistakes, because you never know which way round things can go and how things can turn out. It is... Uh, Omron currently in uh, third place who's got uh, Adam Dyke in fourth on those intermediate tyres uh, 10 second lead over Stu Shelton so that lead is increasing maybe Stu starting to suffer a little bit with the uh, wear on uh, those wet weather tyres compared to uh, Dyke's intermediates but uh, we shall see Andy White already taken three seconds out of Stu Shelton's lead that he had uh, so certainly the tyres are playing a major factor uh, in uh, Shelton's uh, recovery I say that there's not a huge amount of wear so clearly Shelton unhappy with the balance of the car um, in the latter stages with just 13, 13 minutes 40 seconds to go um, but uh, Andy White is certainly pushing very very hard um, very very wide through Blanchemont uh, as he comes up to the bus stop chicane hitting the brakes as late as he dare in, these, uh, in the wet weather um, but doing a fantastic job in taking uh, what was it it was 10 seconds we come across the start and finish line uh, we see Moncani hit the pit I did say it would be a, a major miracle if he could get to the end uh, and unfortunately a splash and dash required for Moncani to get to the end of the race 
uh, but it's down to 6.6 four seconds nearly taken out of uh, Stu Shelton's lead over Andy White uh, so Andy is on a major major charge um, do you know what I'm going to have a quick look we're looking at a minute to uh, Dennington uh, for Andy White and Omron is 21 seconds of 40 it's still about 40 39 40 seconds uh, between the two of them but uh, will Omron even have to pit yet yeah, we are yet to see it is still anyone's guess with I reckon about five and a half laps to go now for uh, Dennington who's lost a little bit of time it surely it's not the commentator's curse coming on to uh, Dennington it's down to four and a half seconds he's lost half a second in the last lap and a half to uh, Little John it could just be fuel management and tyre management but who knows but Little John is just starting to eke away at that lead just that little bit he's extending the gap to Omron maybe he's gone do you know what I've got enough fuel let's just knock it up one little notch just gain that little bit of pace and sure enough he is reeling that time back it's down to one uh, 4.3 seconds now but who knows who knows Omron still in a fairly decent third place with uh, Adam Dyke now uh, 22.7 seconds behind in fourth place on those intermediate tyres fuel's looking good to the end of the race as well for him uh, so it's whether or not he can hold off any attack from Stu Shelton who's got a nine and a half second uh, gap to uh, try and pull back uh, to Adam Dyke and Andy White there in uh, sixth place now down to 5.3 seconds uh, so another second second and a half taken out of Shelton so far on this half a lap and we come up to the, the faster section so Andy will be quicker out the corner you can see the time just eight just falling away that's two tenths of a second already while in one corner down towards Blanchemont now and he'll be better on the brakes as well as they come up to the braking zone uh, for the bus stop chicane through Blanchemont out very very wide there again from Andy uh, taking as much uh, as much of the track as he can and some into the braking zone down to 4.7 seconds now so he's coming down more and more and more just ekes out that little bit as uh, Andy White gets a little bit sideways through the middle section of the bus stop chicane the the dogs are going mad they're loving it as well back to the lead and uh, Dennington is still got that lead it's still around the four and a half second mark so no increase uh, no uh, closing uh, from Little John this time round unfortunately and uh, or a little bit sideways out of turn 10 and uh, into 11 for uh, Little John Marshall we see or Collins we see coming into pit lane as well deciding not quite enough fuel on board let's have a look how Omron's doing because that is going to be the telltale I think he's okay 10 minutes left to go about three eighths of a tank as well I think Omron's okay on fuel so it's all going to be down to whether or not White can close up that massive gap uh, that he gave himself uh, it's down to about 35 seconds between the two of them now so it's going to be close it's going to be very very close I think towards the end of this race um, but uh, Andy has certainly given himself given himself a massive task to do uh, but Dennington now up to again five seconds maybe he's just toying with little John uh, just going yeah 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 you're catching you're catching you're catching no you're not no I've still got this in the bag um, very very similar to uh, some some of the top Formula 1 drivers you see the, the likes of Hamilton, Verstappen do it yeah you can catch me but then just bang in a decent lap time and uh, set maybe even set fastest lap who knows uh, let's see if he does make a change oh no he's very very deep in the bus stop chicane there's the mistake there's the mistake that's going to cost him time does little John do the same no he doesn't he keeps it very very tight through um through the bus stop and he there one and a half seconds in one small mistake um, Dennington was very very late on the brakes into uh, the bus stop chicane ran it very very wide made sure he'd make the apex for the uh, the second part the left hander but it cost him there we are look two seconds that's cost him one small mistake two seconds and now little John will start to smell those exhaust fumes and uh, start focusing on the rear bumper as they go up through a rouge he can see he's visibly closer he can see um, little John's line through a rouge and through Radion down the Kemmel straight and he'll start to see him just in that distance there you can see it he'll start to see the the red uh, of the the tail lights 
glowing that little bit more in the, the haze kicked up by the uh, wet weather tyres and all the spray kicked up at the back. Um, and as I say that, through uh, Lacoon, uh, Dunnington seems to extend that lead just that little bit. Uh, there's certain areas that they, these two are stronger than the other uh, at. And uh, it looks like any small mistake here again from uh, Dennington and uh, Little John's going to be right up on the uh, the exhaust pipes of uh, of that Porsche 911 so uh, has to keep a very very close eye 23 seconds back now is Omron um, who has got roughly the same amount of gap to uh, Adam Dyke in fourth place uh, who's now losing more and more time to Stu Shelton it's down to 5.8 seconds now uh, Shelton might might just be sniffing fourth place here as uh, as the time's ticking away uh maybe those intermediate tires just giving up that little bit too much uh for adam yeah the wear to uh shelton is just that little bit worse unfortunately for adam um roughly the same sort of uh, fuel usage so it's going to come down to tire wear for the two of them unfortunately and uh, maybe just that little bit too much for adam at the end of the race having said that it's under three seconds now to Andy White, who is actually taking time out of our leaders now. Um, we saw earlier it was about 1.1, uh, 1 minute, 1 second. Uh, the gap is down to 59 seconds, so he's actually gained time on our leaders, let alone Omron in third place. What's the gap between the two of those two now? We're looking at 20, 30 seconds, maybe 29, 30 seconds roughly between the two. So it's 10 seconds. It's come down four minutes. It's not quick enough. It's not quick enough. But Omron, any mistake, fuel, tyres, who knows what could happen. I don't think the final step of the podium is quite certain just yet. We go back to uh, Dennington at the front and he's extended the lead. After that mistake on the previous lap, he's extended the lead out to 3.7 seconds now uh, to Little John, who will be kicking himself after that uh, and not being able to take advantage. Uh, just to complete the uh, lineup, we've got Moncani in seventh place, who will be fueled to the end of the race, no doubt now. Um, with probably minimal fuel saving given uh, the amount on board and then Collins in uh, eighth place as well again fuel to the end of the race and uh, will be pushing as hard as he can to try and catch Moncarni there in uh, seventh place and uh, just pick up those last extra few little points uh, in the battle with George not finishing as well Fitzy not uh, taking part and Morgan not taking part Collins could possibly jump th uh, three places in the uh, championship tonight who knows, who knows uh, we've still got uh, about five minutes left to go as well plus they've got to finish the lap they're on so uh, you never know there, there could be a few extra laps I did say earlier on it'd be 23 laps it might just eke to 24, um, but I, I went out on a limb early and said 23 laps. Uh, Dennington now up to a five second lead again uh, over uh, Little John. Dennington clearly very happy with the uh, setup of that car and uh, certainly got something over Little John tonight. Despite making the mistake, dropping down to under three seconds, uh, he's already extended that out uh, within two laps to uh, the five second mark again. Uh, Omron. Uh, in third place now, 34 seconds behind. Uh, so I did. I said earlier that uh, he might be playing a, a great uh, strategical game, but unfortunately, just not working out for Omron tonight on uh, the fuel. Uh, but looking at a, a fairly decent third place at the moment, uh, 34, 35 seconds behind Little John, but. Uh, the gap to Dyke is actually coming down that little bit. Dyke is now just 16.5 seconds behind Omron uh, on those intermediate tyres. So you never know. Four minutes to go. It might just be too much of a too much of a push uh, for Dyke to get the um, get the final step on the podium. But you never know. Stranger things have happened in motorsport. We see that uh, Andy White has got himself up into fifth place now ahead of Stu Shelton. Already 1.6 seconds ahead and now just five seconds to Adam Dyke in fourth place. Andy is on for probably, certainly fifth place. Barring any mistakes, he'll be on for fifth place. Fourth is doable. Third, unfortunately, I think it's just about giving him just too much to do. Um, for, uh, for tonight unfortunately 
maybe a, a early, slightly earlier pit stop for the uh, splash and dash. All this being said, who's to say that we might not see um, Omron hit pit lane again? But uh, with three minutes to go, Dennington already coming down to Lacombe. I'm going to go out on a limb now and say that he could very well get round and get 24 laps in the book. Uh, Omron will certainly get another go uh, and an extra lap. Adam Dyke, uh, 3.2 seconds, 2.7 seconds now to uh, Andy White. Andy is just reeling Adam in massively they come across the line two minutes 40 to go these six will get an extra lap I think it will be just too much of an ask now uh, for Moncarni in seventh to get an extra lap in uh, over the rest of them sideways there uh, as he comes down uh, towards uh, Blanchemont uh, out of turn number 11 but uh, I would hazard guess that Moncarni will be going on to his final lap as he crosses start finish line and uh, as Marshall dropped back a bit, he has unfortunately. Uh, so some mistake, I unfortunately for Marshall, I'd say, has dropped him well back off of Moncarni. Those two were looking uh, looking to have a nice little battle for seventh and eighth, uh, but unfortunately, uh, Collins dropping back that little bit from Moncarni, <coughs> and uh, pretty much going to settle uh, for eighth place now, Collins. Back to uh, Dunnington in first place, and it's a 5.2 second lead now, and. Uh, Barring any major mistake, Dennington has got this one sewn up, sealed, signed for, and certainly delivered. He comes down towards Blanchemont uh, for the penultimate time it will be. And uh, just make sure there's no mistakes there. Through Blanchemont, not running too wide, keeping it off the curb as much as he can. Up towards the bus stop chicane, making sure he breaks early this time. No running deep into uh, the bus stop this time for uh, Dennington. Nice and tidy. Puts the power on, comes across the start and finish line to put lap number 22 into the book. And it will be lap number 23 will be the final lap. I was correct. I had my strategy worked out correctly in the end uh, very, very quickly. 23 laps it will be to the end of the race. Little John comes across the line as well, uh, giving chase, but uh, in all honesty, probably admitting to uh, defeat for, um, for the lead. Omron still... Uh, uh, further back, 37.8 seconds further back in third place. Dyke and Andy White both together now as they come up towards Blanchemont. Will Andy have a look at the braking zone into the bus stop chicane? And then 17 seconds is just, 18 seconds is just going to be too much to catch uh, Omron for the final step of the podium. Andy White looking towards the outside. Dyke covers the inside into the bus stop. Andy early on the brakes trying to get the switch back but he'll uh, use the better uh, better less worn wet weather tyres uh, remember Adams on the intermediates they come across the line now just about getting the extra lap uh, I think Shelton's dropped back and he will be the first person to finish as he comes across the line now and he does sure enough finish in sixth place uh, probably just about saving him I would imagine on the fuel in the end yeah yeah, strategical move from Shelton there in the end um, as uh, Moncarni will uh, take 7th place uh, and he's still not quite able to get ahead of Adam Dyke here um, but better exit through Radion down the Kemmel straight using the slipstream pulling out wide early he will have the outside line into Lacombe but will he be able to break that little bit later just about by the looks of it and he will take 4th place there on the, on the final lap a uh, little bit wide through the first part of Lacombe, allowing Adam just that little bit of a chance uh, to come back. But uh, no, that is Andy's position now. And up into fourth, a great recovery in the end from uh, Andy after the late splash and dash. We go back to uh, Dennington, who's now coming up through uh, the final, uh, for the final time through Blanchemont and up to the braking area for uh, the bus stop she came for one last time and he will be ecstatic taking it out to an 8.8 .8 second lead in the end nine seconds now uh, so maybe an issue for little john in the uh, latter stages of fuel saving i don't know but a fantastic drive from lee dennington to come across the line and take a second victory in a row and uh, there it is dennington takes victory at uh, Spa Frackershops. Mark Littlejohn comes across the line now for second place. 
He will be very, very happy with that. Snaking the rear end across the line. Rasmus Omran now uh, down the uh, the long straight. I say long straight. It's very much curved with uh, the Blanche Ramon corner. Seven, turn 17 and 18. Uh, but he'll be more than happy with third place. Uh, Andy White certainly gave him a run for the money in the early stages. But uh, just uh, losing out on the uh, splash and dash. Omran now into the braking zone of... Uh, the bus stop chicane, flicking it right, flicking it left, put the power down nice and gently, not to spin now. You wouldn't want to do that. A flash of the headlights, he will be happy as anything. Third place for Omron. Fourth place will be Andy White making sure of it into uh, bus stop chicane. Adam Dyke will be in fifth, certainly uh, doing a fantastic job on those intermediates. Andy White in fourth. And Adam Dyke very, very loose coming out of the bus stop chicane in fifth place. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of your race. And uh, great to see from uh, everyone involved how they kept it in such a straight line for so long. I don't know. I hate racing in the wet. Uh, but great work from, uh, from Dennington there to take victory. And uh, great to see for the championship as well because that will extend his championship lead. Uh, over Little John as well so uh, I don't think he even let Little John take a um, a lapsed lead so an extra point as well uh, so great to see from him um, but yes we'll have a look at the results I did bring him up and then didn't actually talk about them it was Lee Dennington who won the race uh, by 10.4 seconds in the end from uh, Mark Littlejohn in second place he done a fantastic job taking a 48 and a half second uh, advantage over third place Rasmus Omron uh, in the BWT uh, pink Porsche fourth place was the uh, recovering Andy White and what a fantastic last little stint uh, it was from Andy um, recovering back up into fourth place Adam doing as just a fantastic job doing uh, two stints on those intermediate tyres taking fifth place sixth place was Stu Shelton in the uh, BP uh, flat livery uh, Porsche and then uh, Brian Moncani in seventh with Brucey Collins in eighth Unfortunately, we did lose uh, Nuno George to some major issue. I don't actually know what happened with uh, Nuno uh, in the end, but some major issue certainly for uh, for Nuno. Uh, we saw him going straight on at turn nine. And uh, obviously, Lane, we lost uh, quite early on. We saw him drop back very, very quickly. Uh, so some major issue there for uh, Lane. And uh, a little bit unfortunate for him because he showed good pace early on. Um yes fantastic uh, driving from everyone and uh, a, a great sixth round we go uh, next week I can't remember where we are next week no I can't remember off the top of my head where we are oh Kim's looking up very very quickly Kim's looking up quickly for us now where we are next week we're back into Interlagos uh, and off to uh, Brazil and uh, who knows what uh, what weather we can see there. We we could start with a beautiful sunshine and it could turn into sodding wet weather and just torrential rain. We've seen it in Formula 1. We could see it at any point. Um, but uh, who knows what we will see next week. Um, hopefully some fantastic racing by everyone involved as well. Uh, if you are interested in any of the races uh, that ESR hold, uh, do check out the website. That's uh, Elder Sim Racing, E L D A R Sim Racing dot co dot UK. You can check out everything that we run on there. You can check out the Facebook page as well. Um, drop us a like and we'll get you into the uh, group. Any races you fancy taking part in, give us a shout. We'll try and get you in as soon as we can. For now, I've been uh, Nick for Elder Sim Racing and the yeah. Porsche, uh, Porsche 911 RSR Championship and uh, we'll see you next week. Thank you very much. Good night. Goodbye.